G'day guys, today we're going to be going over how to automatically, somewhat automatically produce a vegetation density bush bash orienteering type map in QGIS very, very quickly and easily. So I'm going to explain this a couple of times. First, just very briefly, for people that know the deal, they've done this sort of thing before and just need to know how to use the script. But it, then again, once more, just for people who um, might want a little bit more context as well as might want to understand the script a little bit more and maybe do some modifications to the script for um, whatever purposes they need to do that. So uh, let's just jump into it really quickly for those that want to just dive straight into this. So you will need Q uh, with grass, you will also need less tools, and then uh, you will also need a zip folder which is ideally sitting by itself and contains less point clouds as well as DEMs in the form of TIFF files. And then there will be a script in the description, hopefully, this is it here. Um, so I'll just try and load it as if you were bringing it in now. And all you need to do from here is just hit run and it's going to ask you for the full path of that zip folder we were mentioning just a moment ago. Now, hot tip, if you want to get a uh, path, full path of a file really quickly and easily, I found out that if you go to the security tab in properties, you can see the full path including the file name hitting, sitting right there. So quick and easy just to copy that and then you can paste it into here and I do have handling for backslashes, so that's fine. Just hit OK, and it's going to do its thing. Now, um, it does, as you can see here, run a bat file, which um, gets the, the processing in last tools done. This is just using two fairly small um, point clouds, but even then it still takes a little bit to, to process them and normalize them. Yep. So that's just completed the last tools component. Now it's working away at the last little QGIS bit, which was very quick as we just noticed after it finished the last tools part. And there, that's it, that's done. So what we've produced here are, uh, just to quickly go through them, we've got the contours layer there. We've got slope for where it's in excess of 45 degrees, just to mark some really steep places. And then we've got the under dense, understory density raster there. And also underneath there is, um, it's kind of hard to see, but you can see like there's some gaps up here, which are being filled by the sort of smoothed version of that sitting underneath. So that's pretty much it. That's how to get started on that. So um, now I'm gonna go into this all again, but in a little bit maybe slower paced way and explain the full sort of context of why I guess on earth you'd be doing this, you know, um, the ways you'd sort of set up a, a zip folder with the files you need. And um, yeah, then we'll, we'll jump into some of the details of the script. So just for some context, let's say, for example, um, you have an area of bush and in that bush, maybe you're wanting to, I don't know, you're going for a, a walk through the bush, you're doing a bit of a bush bash. Maybe there's some sort of orienteering thing going on. Or, or maybe maybe this is, you know, this is even fine just for like university study or something like that, where you need to quickly and easily produce a, a vegetation density uh, map raster. Uh, could be useful for that. So let's just say, for example, that you're, I don't know, here on this street and you want to bush bash, you're ignoring the fact that there are tracks, <laughs> you want to bush bash through the bush all the way over here to get to this street, but you want to know what is the density of this bush. So should you just go straight beeline or should you maybe go across here because it's easier here or go across here? You know, you want to kind of factor in both the, the slope and the contours as well as the density of the bush to find the quickest way. So I'm not too sure what country you're watching this from, but I know that if you are in Australia and you uh, live in, it looks like Tassie, but also New South Wales or the coast of Queensland, then you are going to have point cloud data freely available to you through this Elvis website. If you're elsewhere, then um, all I can suggest is just search around to see where you can find free if there is freely available um, LiDAR data, or maybe it's not freely available and you have acquired it commercially, I'm not too sure. Um, but let's uh, let's just roll with this example for the moment. In Elvis, what I'm going to do is select this area that I care about, which is the area I want to get the um, 
information for. That is the the LAS point clouds and the DEMs, the TIFF files. And what comes up after I put in this little box here is uh, you can see it's ordered by the ownership of the data. So just be aware that sometimes you may need to get data from uh, two different data owners. In this situation, we're just going to be using data from Geoscience Australia. Going to be grabbing their digital elevation models, which are the TIFF files as well as the point clouds, which are the last files. And what you will notice here, Mount Wellington River Derwent 2010, Mount Wellington River Derwent 2010, that this um, DEM was derived from this these point clouds here. So these are related, but we're going to want to download both just for simplicity's sake for chucking it into the script. And of course, once you've done that, you can enter in your email to get that sent to you. So let's just say that's been sent to you. You've got your uh, little zip folder here, which by the way, this stuff has just recently appeared because we've run that script. Um, these are all the little derivative files. Uh, let's just say you've got that zip folder and let's just say it was sitting by itself as it was before. That's when you're going to want to, well, I guess for starters, make sure you've got QGIS. That's a pretty obvious one. Make sure that grass is enabled. That is, if you open up these grass tools, it appears and you don't get an error. Know that sometimes if you don't open up QGIS with grass and you try and open up one of these grass tools, it'll, it'll tell you that grass isn't enabled. So just make sure that's all good to go. Uh, then uh, obviously, so we were using a Python script just before, but I don't believe you need to install Python uh, explicitly because I believe that Python gets installed with QGIS. So I think the Python that comes with QGIS is fine. I'm not too sure about that though. So just let me know how you go if you get any errors with Python not being installed. And then you also need to make sure that when you do get last tools, at least for this script to work to work in an unmodified way, you need to have last tools in the root C drive directory. And obviously you can modify the script to have last tools wherever you want, but as is, it is pointing to the um, C drive slash last tools slash bin in order to get the exes that it needs. And um, that's pretty much it. That's all you need to do. That's the, the context that you need in order to make sure that you have the TIFF files and the last file sitting in a zip folder. Uh, run it all just as we did before and uh, make sure, yeah, QGIS and last tools is set up and then you're pretty much just set to run and do as we did before. So that's great. So for people that want to go a little bit deeper into this, it might help if I go through the script just to see where, um, just so we get a bit more of an understanding in case many, any errors happen to come along. I hit cancel, by the way, before instead of OK, and that's why that error came up. Um, just in case we get any other errors that appear and trying to figure out why on earth you got errors. Um, yeah, we'll just try and get an understanding of this script. So. First thing to know is this bit here is the part that um, brings this little prompt up. So this is not essential. I, I just decided to put this in as a little thing to make it easier for people um, or maybe a bit more user friendly. But you could get rid of that and just hard code the path in yourself, which is this variable here, which is the path, I believe. No, sorry. So what you would put into here is the path plus the zip name. So what it does is it takes the zip folder from Elvis. Yeah, so that would be the full path including the file name. So that's where you could manually hard code that in. And what else? So is currently the script is set up to only work with one zip folder. So let's see if we can find that. Here it is, extract the zip folder. So at the moment, yeah, as I said, it's only set up to do one zip folder, but let's just say you had multiple zip folders with a whole bunch of different LAS files and TIFF files from various sources and locations. You could modify this script to maybe run this line a few different times for each of the different um, zip folders. I think that should work fine. Also keep in mind that, yeah, this is currently set up to assume that point clouds are either in LAS or LAS format and that the DEMs are in TIFF format with a single F, not a double F. So obviously you could modify this to look for 
yeah, so I guess you put in TIFF um, or something like that if you wanted a different um, file to be extracted. Um, what else? So down further down here is where we get to the part where there is a temporary bat file being made, um, which is this part here. And this, this is interesting, I hadn't done much th with this before, but okay, so this is basically running these LAS tools EXEs, and it's got the settings that work for me. Uh, I've got four cores, which you may not want. I've got it set up for wilderness, which you may not want. Um, I believe the accuracy, it doesn't explicitly state it, but I believe the accuracy is on, like, it's not on fine. I, d I don't really know... Um, you'll be able to figure that out by running last tools through the, the GUI to figure out what the, the parameter would be for changing the accuracy of the calculation of the, the normalization through this tool. But I believe I've got it on the lowest accuracy within these um, parameters here for less ground new, and you could change that to whatever you wanted it to be. Also keep in mind that there seems to be sometimes some coordinate system issues with LAS files. I mean, maybe it was just the LAS files that I was working with, um, but sometimes I've found that when I download some LAS files, it doesn't come with a coordinate system. So I guess the way to double check on that is to bring in the TIFF files. So let's just bring one in now, and let's just check the coordinate system of that. Bring that over here. Uh, da, 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 da. This is in GDA 94 MGA zone 55, so you'd want to probably, you know, if there was issues with coordinate systems, you want to make sure that your QGIS project is set up to match the coordinate system of the files that you're bringing in. If they don't happen to have a coordinate system, or if the last the last file specifically don't have a coordinate system um, that is recognised or at all, as we mentioned before, this is using. Grass tools, which aren't necessarily enabled by default when you start up QGIS, so just make sure you type into your start menu, start up QGIS with grass if you're having any issues with that. And then finally, uh, the other thing that I wanted to mention is we do have in here these little commands, I face, and what these, and uh, I, I don't know which of these do or don't work within QGIS, but what I, what I do know is that this I face thing here, I believe means that this Python script needs to be run like this while the QGIS window is open. That is, I'm pretty sure you can run Python files through QGIS without having the actual QGIS program open, but what won't work, I believe, are commands like this with the iFace in there. So if you were wanting to, to run this, but you weren't necessarily wanting to do any special styling like I've done with the, the purple lines and like the yellow for the slope, etc. If you weren't wanting to do that sort of styling, then that's that's fine. You can just like remove the parts of the script here that do that that styling. So that's pretty much it. Hopefully, that's given us a decent understanding of of um, what we can do here and how this all works. Um, just for a little bit of understanding of once it's it's um, been produced. What, we're, what exactly we're looking at it of course we've got the contours here which tell you the slope and then the colors here which is the density of vegetation between zero and one so the white areas are the thick areas and the dark areas are the not so thick areas so if i was to walk from as we mentioned from this street here over to this street here um, what would I do? I would probably look at coming down this slope here, somewhere through here, and I'd make a decision to either go up through this gully, where it looks a little bit less thick and up onto the street, or it looks like there's a bit of a gap through the vegetation here where it's not as dense, and because it's on a nose, like a sort of a slope down ridge there, um, it may be nicer than walking up a creek, if that's a creek up that gully. So I might come down the slope, walk up that nose, and then maybe across the contours a little bit and up onto that street. So that's how I'd read this sort of map uh, that's been, been produced. And obviously we've got these yellow areas in here indicating super steep parts, so you can think of them as barriers. You can't really get past them um, because they're too steep, or at least you'd think maybe they might be too steep to get past. So yeah, that's pretty much it. If you guys have any um, thoughts or comments on this or ways you could uh, modify this code or, or use this in a different way, uh, if you have any errors at any point, because I know that there are a lot of um, dependencies and it is set up in a very specific way, the amount of error handling that I have is fairly minimal. 
a bit of error handling saying you need to run this in QGIS. Um, and so, you know, the error handling is very, fairly minimal, so I'm sure that people will come across errors, so just make sure you, you post those in the comments and then we can work through it. Um, yeah, if you have any, any other thoughts on this, any other questions, just let me know. But otherwise, good luck. Uh, let me know if the link to the script breaks at any point, because hopefully it should be fine, but we'll find out. And other than that, yeah, let me know and have a good one.